Hello and welcome back, champions of milk. Alright, a few more duels in the arena, trying to get the fundamentals down for the Freed's Great Sight. I find duels to be the best way to test just the fundamentals of both your playstyle and your build. Of course there are builds that are really designed to shine in group play, however, I don't know, I, I kind of came into PvP as a duelist back in Dark Souls 1, so that's my favorite way to test the builds, even though these days I really do seem to enjoy invasions and group PvP more. And the simplicity and the kind of purity of 1v1 dueling with no heals just kind of lends itself a little bit better to analyzing the strengths and weaknesses of your build in every sort of situation. So, speaking of that, Scott Yun, damn no HTML, he put up a very nice dueling video for this weapon, and he talks about how varying the timing and your patterns of using that stance weapon art are very key for landing those trades that you want to land. So there, back there, you saw you can punish that weapon art in between the swings if you can time it right, but if you vary your timing as the user of the site, that becomes a lot more difficult and what becomes a good punish can become a great trade in your favor. So, you know, a lot of shitty things get said about Yun. He, you know, gravitates towards playstyles that a lot of people might not find appealing or fun, but, you know, we all play video games our own way, and, you know, he does his thing very well, and he provides really great information. So, check that video out if you are really interested in using this weapon. And I do not mind landing trades on this build, especially with running attacks coming in to punish either casts or vulnerable frames between the swings of that sweet stance weapon art. So that is one way to really get a lot out of the scythe, but another great way I found is soul mass. So you see there was that one left over there because I was using an unlock and staggering its firing pattern and it just makes it really difficult for anybody to be able to get in on you and it also allows you to land clean combos, not even trades or trades with very heavy weapons that think they can trade with you while that soul mass is up, which most can't. So this guy was running a similar build but was using homing crystal soul mass, what I consider to be the very worst of that family of spells and because I'm using standard soul mass, I can get that up on demand with the same animation of a soul arrow and keep them struggling at range even. So, very good spell to bring along, and I'd say definitely do not bring along home and crystal soul mass. It's not worth it. Affinity can be worth it. I'll be talking about that more in a new series I'm starting up on casting in PvP. And I'm going to focus the first one on these soul mass spells and I hope y'all are looking forward to that. This guy was a pretty good player, but they just didn't build their character correctly. They picked the worst soul mass spell, and they also were not using the rings. You'll notice that his soul arrow did very, very little damage to me, so you really do need to be using those caster rings, unfortunately, and using both of them because of that multiplicative stacking they provide. 40% damage is not something you can just kind of pass up, unfortunately, even when you're doing melee and casting and you're short on points, you're short on ring slots, ring slots are very valuable, but 40% damage is even more valuable. So <laughs> I'd say you definitely want to be using those rings if you're using these spells. However, I'd say even the soul mass spells can be used very effectively without getting ringed up for max damage because of that stun they can provide, because of that sort of defensive option and the ability to use them to combo into weapon strikes. So if you're trying to use spells without rings, just try and use them for utility purposes. Even the soul mass spells can have a place in your arsenal. They are that good. So for this last one, I was fighting somebody who was getting a little bit of a few lag spikes, especially early on in the match with, and when I see somebody with a light weapon and lagging, even if they seem like they're good at spacing, parrying, I get pretty aggressive, especially if I'm using a hyper armor weapon like I am here, because they're going to have a really hard time finding those vulnerable frames between my hyper armor attacks to land their punishes. So I get a little bit aggressive, I get a little bit sloppy even there with the R1 <laughs> mashing trying to lure him in, and 
The little rude throwing knife was all I needed after so much successful mashing. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're looking forward to the Caster Academy series that's coming out soon. And I hope you stay milky.